Hello, my name is Jeff Messier. I'm a professor in electrical and computer engineering in the Schulich School of Engineering at the University of Calgary. And this is module six in my computer networks lecture series, where we talk about the internet checksum, which is a method of error detection. So if you're following along in the series, we just finished introducing the concept of error detection. And our very first example was the parity check bit. The internet checksum is definitely a stronger method for error detection, but it is very similar in many ways to the parity check bit. It's an addition based error detection scheme. And so specifically, the internet checksum is used in the TCP and UDP layers of the protocol stack. So way up, um, higher in the protocol stack. So we're, we're kind of jumping around a little bit. This is not a, uh, an error detection scheme that is used at the data link layer, which is sort of where we're at in our lectures right now. But I do want to, I still wanted to introduce it just because it is kind of a nice flow from the parity check bit um, example. And the details for the internet checksum are described in the RFC document 1071. RFC stands for request for comments. And these are documents put out by the internet engineering task force. And so you can go onto the internet engineering task force website, ietf.org and find this document published there in PDF format if you want more information. So one of the things you'll, I mean, if you are taking this course for credit, you'll notice that I haven't required a textbook. And, you know, that's partly because once you get to sort of a senior undergraduate level, I find that a lot of students have textbook purchasing fatigue. But also the internet is a as you might imagine, a surprisingly good source of information on the internet. So, um, you know, a lot of what we're talking about in this class, you can actually find in sort of industry standardized documents that are published on the internet. And so these RFC documents are actually quite, most of them are quite descriptive. They include examples and they're really worth taking a look at if you're interested in more information. So anyway, if you read RFC 1071, it talks about how to do the internet checksum. And basically you take your packet and I'm referring to a packet now because this is higher up the pro protocol stack. So you take your packet and you chop it into 16 bit chunks or 16 bit words. Then you add all of those words together to get modulo 16 to get a value X then the checksum is basically equal to the negative of that value. So when you have your, your payload and your checksum and you add the payload and the checksum together, modulo 16, you should always get zero. And if you don't get zero, then you know an error has occurred. Basically, this is ex when you when you think about it carefully, this is exactly the same thing that the parity check bit is doing, except um, the parity check bit is modulo two and the Internet checksum is modulo um, 16. And what I'm going to do now is, is, is work through some examples. So the Internet checksum actually uses one comp one's complement numbers which if you have been sort of studying computer architecture, you know that two's complement is probably a little bit more standard, particularly when we're representing um, information at kind of the processor and microprocessor level. But the internet checksum uses one's complement, and that means that we actually have two values for zero. So the positive numbers, so if this is, if these are the decimal numbers, these are the positive values, so just standard binary counting one, two, three, four, and so on. And the negative of the corresponding negative number is just the, um, the bitwise inversion 
of the of the positive number. So if this is positive one, this is negative one. If this is positive six, this is negative six. And the implication, however, is that we have two values for zero, which you don't have with two's complement. And so let's work through some examples to kind of see how this all fits together from a, a checksum perspective. Okay, so let's get into some examples. And the first thing I'm gonna do before we do a uh, checksum example is just to do a little bit of a refresher or a brief overview on one's complement arithmetic. So let's say, for example, we want to add the number positive two to negative three. Of course, the answer we're looking for is negative one. We can add one's complement numbers just by doing modulo two addition. So zero, zero, one, zero, and one, one, zero, zero. So that's, you know, this is positive two plus negative three. And then if we just do the, um, the modulo two addition, zero plus zero is zero. 1 plus 0 is 1, 0 plus 1 is 1, 0 plus 1 is 1, and it worked. So we have, we were supposed to get negative 1 as our answer, and we got negative 1 as our answer. However, you have to be a little bit careful with your carry bits when doing 1's complement uh, arithmetic, and in particular, there's something called an end around carry that you have to be careful of. And so let's do a, a second example where we're taking positive two and we're adding the it to um, negative zero because we have two zeros, positive and negative zero. And of course, if we add zero to something, we should you know get our original number back, right? And so if we represent this as one's complement binary, we've got zero, zero, one, zero for positive two. Our negative zero is all ones. And so zero plus one is one. One plus one is zero with a carry bit. One plus one is zero with a carry bit. One plus one is zero with a carry bit and the end around carry basically means we take this carry bit and we wrap it around and we add it um, to our results. So then we have one plus one is zero with a carry bit. One plus zero is one and no carry bit. And so then we just pull down the zero and the zero. And so we end up getting positive two, which is the answer that we expected. So again, it's 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 similar to the, you know, if you've studied two's complement or or binary addition in general, it's very similar except for this end around carry sort of extra step. So what I want to do now is an actual internet checksum example. However, the the real internet checksum is performed using modulo 16-bit arithmetic. So you're supposed to use 16-bit words. And um, that takes a lot of writing when you're working through an example. So I'm going to do a modified version of the internet checksum where we use 4-bit words. So we use nibbles. And so we've got a payload in our example that we want to protect that is 12 bits long. And so the first four bit word is um, four. The second four bit word is F. And the third four bit word is, oops, I don't know why I did that, three. And so again, the internet checksum works by taking the summation of our payload. In this case, we're gonna add the payload up in four bit chunks rather than 16 bit chunks, get the result. And then the negative of that sum is going to be our checksum. And so we're going to add four to F and then take that result and add it to three. And so, so we start by adding 
0x4 to 0xf, which is 0, 1, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, carry the 1, 0, carry the 1. We've got to do our end around carry. 1, 0, carry the 1, 0, carry the 1, 1, 0, 0. And so we get 4 in binary, which is what we expect because um, f or four ones is just zero. It's the negative representation of zero. And so we've added our first two, we've added four to f. Now we have to take the result and add it to three. And so we add three, zero, zero, one, one. This one's easy, one, 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 zero. And so the result is equal to seven, which, you know, is, is not surprising, right? Because we added four to F, which was zero, added to three should give us the result of seven. And so the checksum is equal to negative zero X seven or one zero, 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 which is the negative, the, one, the one's complement representation of negative seven. So this means we, you know, we started with a 12 bit payload, but in the end, we finish off with a 16 bit packet. So our packet, final packet, is a payload of four, f three and then on the end we add a payload of or sorry we add a checksum equal to the ones complement number negative seven so in the end our overall packet is 16 bits long and when we receive it, we basically do this same modulo four bit ones complement addition, including the checksum. And if everything works okay, we should get zero as a result. So let's now do a, a, some sort of extend this and take a look at what happens to this system when error patterns actually do occur. So when you add this entire packet together, modulo four, um, the, the payload and the, the checksum, you should get zero. And I'll, I'll leave that to you as an exercise. I do want to do some checksum calculations, but I want to show you some examples uh, that illustrate what happens when we have errors in the packets. So uh, let's start out by considering a two-bit error pattern. So, and, and this two-bit error pattern was the, the kind of error pattern that confused or, or slipped past our single parity bit. Let's see if the internet checksum is, is able to capture it. And so let's say two bits occur in our second nibble of our payload. And so that's the one that's equal to all ones. And so let's say our error pattern is zero, one, one, zero. And remember our error patterns are not ones complement arithmetic. It's just a straight up exclusive or mask. It just flips the bits that correspond to a one. And so our actual nibble after we experience the errors are one zero zero one and that's negative six so our received packet i'll make that explicit our received packet is four negative six 
positive three, and then we have our checksum that's negative seven. And so um, what I wanna do is add these, the nibbles of this receive packet together, and hopefully we should get a non-zero result because that's what indicates an error. So I'll just give ourselves some room here. So let's start by adding positive four to negative six. So we have zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one. One, one, zero, one. And then we take that result and add it to three. So one, one, zero, one, and we add it to positive three, zero, zero, one, one. Zero, carry the one, zero, carry the one, zero, carry the one, zero. We have another one and we wrap it around. Zero, 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 one. And then we take that result and we add it to the checksum. So zero, 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 one. And we add it to negative seven, which is one, zero, zero, zero. And the result is one, zero, zero, one. Okay, so not zero, obviously, not all zeros or not all ones. And so we know that an error has occurred. So it's worked. The two bit error pattern that flipped the second nibble to from um, a value of all ones to a value that's equivalent to negative six. When we added all of our uh, components together in the frame, we got something that was non-zero. Okay, so is it possible to fool the internet checksum? Definitely it is. Error patterns that end up adding to zero across our sort of ones complement word additions end up getting missed by the internet checksum. So let's do an example. So here's our error-free packet. The first nibble is four. The second nibble I've been representing as, as F, but of course we can represent also that as um, negative zero, right? Because one, 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 one is basically equivalent to the negative representation of zero. We have positive three and then our checksum is negative seven. So I'm going to consider a, an example where we have an error in the first nibble and an error in the third nibble. So in the first nibble, the error is going to, um, will subtract three from the value of the nibble. And then here we're gonna consider an error that adds three. So I guess I should say subtracts three and adds three. So we're going to subtract three from the first nibble, add three to the second nibble. And already probably intuitively you can see that we're in trouble, right? Because um, if we're adding all these nibbles together, we add a quantity to one and we subtract the same quantity from the other, we're still going to get zero. But let's continue to move through the example just to sort of see how this works. And so we know that we're starting with um, a nibble that's equal to one or zero, one, zero, zero. We know that if we're subtracting three, we need to end up with a value of zero, 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 one, um, or one, obviously. So the error pattern that gets us there is basically one that flips the, um, 
the, the second bit and also flips the uh, last bit. Here we need to um, add three. So we know that we're going to go from zero, zero, one, one, uh, which is three. And we end up, we need to end up with a value of six. And so the error pattern that's going to do this for us is going to be zero, one, zero, one. <clears throat> And so it's important to remember that the, the, the error patterns themselves do not add to zero. Instead, um, they end up adding three and um, subtracting three. In this case, the error pattern is actually identical. And so the receive packet with the, these errors in them um, the first nibble is equal to one. The second nibble is unchanged. The third nibble is equal to six. And then the checksum, while could have received some errors in this particular example, doesn't. And so now let's move on to taking these values and um, adding them together to see if the checksum spots the errors or if it doesn't. Okay, so let's start by adding one with our negative zero, 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 one, zero, Then we add to six. And then finally, we take that result and subtract seven from it. And the result is zero. And because it's zero, we have to assume that no error has occurred. But of course it has, right? We went to great pains to kind of construct this example that sum to zero across multiple words. And so this is basically the way that the internet checksum is susceptible to error. And if you think about it, if you sort of look back at the single parity bit, an even number of errors is basically, um, when you're doing modulo two addition, an error pattern that's going to sum to zero across multiple terms. In the case of the internet checksum, we've been dealing with four bit words. In the case of the single parity bit, it's just single bits. And so hopefully you can kind of, now that we've gone through these examples, see the parallels between the parity bit and the internet checksum. So the internet checksum, like the parity bit is addition based and the vulnerability of addition based error detection is error patterns that sum to zero across whatever um, system of addition that they happen to be using. And so to summarize this module, basically all error detection schemes will have some error patterns that will not be caught. And the stronger the error detection scheme, the more patterns are caught or the fewer the, you know, the number of patterns we miss, I guess. But um, we're always going to miss something. And now you can see we've, we've looked at two addition based error detection schemes and both miss patterns that sum to zero across whatever um, addition scheme that they're working with. And so the third and final technique that we're going to be looking at is not addition based. It's actually division based and it's known as the cyclical redundancy check error detection technique and it really is the industry standard. So CRCs are used really in most standards and systems that I'm aware of and they are based on some very sort of interesting mathematics and so we're going to spend a fair bit of time next 
sort of diving into CRCs and seeing how they work.